Welcome to Adventures in Grace. This is Jim Hockaday coming to you again with a short video reminding all of us of the purpose of these videos, Adventures in Grace. What do I mean by that? Well, we should be having adventures with God. In other words, opportunities throughout the day to experience the influence of our Lord and our Savior in our lives where we have testimonies of what he's doing testimonies of his love, his healing, his victory, his grace. One of the greatest testimonies, we're going to be talking about this today, is you learning how to discover or to uh, assimilate whether or not what you're involved in is of a spiritual nature, affecting your relationship with God in a positive way or of a negative way. In other words, the moment you begin to draw distinctions between that which is of the world and the flesh, that which is God and the Spirit, that's when you begin to make progress. And the grace of God is all about, in other words, the help, the influence of God is all about helping you to see God in a greater measure, in a tangible way, having prayers answered and helping you to recognize the folly of the world. Well, Jesus invited us, and you know he did, because we've talked about this every single time we have an Adventures in Grace video. Matthew 11, 27 to 30, in the Message Bible, it says, and Jesus resumed talking to the people, but now tenderly. The Father has given me all these things to do and say. This is a unique father and son operation coming out of father and son intimacies and knowledge. No one knows the Son the way the Father does, nor the Father the way the Son does. But I'm not keeping it to myself. I'm ready to go over it line by line with anyone willing to listen. Are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? Come to me, get away with me, and you'll recover your life. Walk with me, work with me, watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting upon you. Keep company with me, and you'll learn how to live freely and lightly. Well, I just thank the Lord today that what we're going to share will be received and understood, assimilated, if you will, and put right into action. I'm going to, right at the very top, give you a grace story. And I won't get specific with this, because some of these are my own personal experiences. But I want to say my grace story today has so much to do with multiple, over the last few days, opportunities to buy into drama, getting upset, being frustrated at the smallest of little things. And you would say, well, how can the smallest of little things have any effect at all? Well, you know, Song of Solomon 2.15 said, it's the little foxes that spoil the vine. So it must be the little tiny things that you recognize that begin to build the consistency and build the continuity of you beginning to come out of an existence in the world where prayers don't answer to an existence in the spirit where prayers are regular. And the answer to them is always. Well, you know, Jesus didn't say, if you ask sometimes, maybe, I sure hope you'll receive. He said, when you ask, you shall receive. When you seek, you shall find. When you knock, the door shall be open. Notice the absoluteness behind what Jesus said is the reason why we can put ourselves out there with faith or trust or resolve and know that we have the answer. And when God's real to you, those answers are regular and to be expected. No, it's not miraculous, and it's not even supernatural. It's just kind of normal, right? Normal. So just giving you some ideas, uh, this week there's just been multiple opportunities for me to buy into the smallest of little things. When I broke something and then I couldn't get it to be fixed, and wow, what an opportunity when I was trying to do one of these Adventures in Grace uh, videos and hear my little tripod, pff, I snapped it and I, I started immediately to go, oh man. And the moment I even yielded that much to it, oh man, inside I was like, that's just drama, Jim, because it really doesn't matter. And everything's okay. And you still have time to do plenty of your videos. And if you need to, you can get a new one because it probably costs $10 anyhow through Amazon. You can have it in a day. 
And I tried to super glue it. And while I'm super gluing it, I'm like, oh, frustrated because, you know, usually when there's a crack, you can get the, find where the pieces actually fit together. And then when you put them there, you can hold them and that super glue will then bond. But I couldn't even find like where it went together. So I was like, I can't get this to work. And I had a great opportunity. And you say, why is this such an issue? It is the little things like this that pull you away from what grace does where you have peace that everything is really okay. Doesn't work. Doesn't God work all things together for good to those that love him and are called according to his purpose? Well, loving him and calling according to his purpose means those that are actually alert, awake, and are recognizing his presence. Because when you are, everything that doesn't seem to be right means so little in light of how God fixes things and makes things work just perfectly. In fact, I'm actually using the same little tiny tripod here, and I just yellow duct taped it together. And you know what? I probably can use it like this for years to come. Now, maybe I'll get another one if I need to as a backup, but you know what? It's just not that big of a deal. Now, that's something that's just one of multiple opportunities this week for me to buy into the drama of the world, something that didn't seem like it was working, and embellish it beyond my awareness of God and lose traction from how real he is. Because notice, folks, it's a balance scale. We talked about that last time. If you're giving so much attention to what is of this world, then you're losing the attention and the awareness and the tangibility to what is of God. So that's why these things can't matter. That's why Peter said, cast your care upon the Lord for he careth for you. Did it say that or did it not say that? Well, what kind of cares? All of them. Because there's nothing of the flesh and there's nothing of the world that's good for you that helps your relationship with God. So the more you learn to cast it all, well, what does that mean? You have to learn to kill your care meter where you just don't care. Well, what happens if I can't fix it and it doesn't look like it's going to work? Well, do you have a relationship with somebody that can do everything and anything at any time? If you do, well, I know, but I mean, in my relationship with God, I've never really seen things like that happen. Well, this is why we're helping you to build the tangibility with God, where just like Jesus said, are you tired? Are you worn out? Are you burned out on religion? Religion is the thing that makes you think you've got something when you've got nothing. It's the thing that makes you get into an argument and be able to argue a point that you can't even get to work. That's religion. You think you have something, but there's no evidence. Everything about what's real in God is evidence from the very beginning to the very end. From A to Z, it's nothing more than evidence. Constant evidence of the reality of God being the God that he is living in your life. Now, I dare you to go into the Word of God and find any place in there where that's not so, because every record of the Word of God where people are involved, it's all about their encounter with God and God's influence in their life. And when God gets involved, things like amazingly happen. Like, like even though the children of Israel were starving and an enemy came against them and these lepers were sitting at the gate saying, you know what, we're gonna die here anyhow. So if we go over to the enemy and ask them, for a little bit of food, maybe they'll give it to us. And if they kill us, we're going to die. So, I mean, what does it matter? And they got up and they started going toward the enemy's camp and God took their footprint and their feet and the shuffling of their feet and the noise that they made as they walked on the road. He amplified it to make the enemy think that the children of Israel are marching on us. And the next thing they know, they began to, in a fury, began to kill each other. And when the lepers got there, there was no one alive. But there was all this food and all this money and all these jewels. And it took three days to bring it all back into the Israelite camp. And they all ate that night and they were filled to the plenty and no one had to die. And they were filled with riches. And are you kidding me? I mean, how do you explain that except God's involved? Well, why would I read that and get excited about that if I didn't want that to work in my own life? And so last week we gave you the scripture over there in Romans chapter 12, 1 and 2 in the Message Bible where it says, here's what I want you to do, God helping you. Take your everyday ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work, and walking around life. 
That's pretty much what we do every day. And place it before God as an offering. What does that seem to indicate? That seems to indicate that the greatest of the influence of your life, because you place it before God as an offering, is you're actually letting God become a part of everything you do with that ordinary life. And it says, embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for him. Don't become so well-adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. When's the last time you thought about whether or not you fit into your culture? You know, I mean, that's a really, really, really good thought, folks. Do we just go along throughout our day, day after day after day, because we have patterns, habits, and routines, and we don't even really think that we're making hundreds and thousands of choices constantly within the course of our day that actually have nothing to do with our spiritual connection to God, but everything to do with our fleshly connection to the world. And then we wonder, in the midst of a situation where we need God to be real, and we need prayers to be answered, why it seems like he's so far away, and why it seems like our faith has dwindled so far to the, to the nothing, and we wonder why we don't see answers to prayers. Folks, answers to prayers are super simple when you're very aware of the presence of God. Well, praise the Lord. These kind of truths, you know, you got to listen to and open your heart to. He goes on to say, readily recognize what he wants from you and quickly respond to it. Unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down to its level of immaturity. God brings the best out of you, develops well-formed maturity in you. Now, I'm going to Ephesians chapter 4, 20 to 24. In the New King James Version, it says, But you have not so learned Christ, if indeed you have heard from him and been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning your former conduct the old man, which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man, which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Notice we're putting something on, we're putting something off. You know, you go to the, you know, the Karate Kid movie, especially the newer one, you know, jacket off, uh, jacket on. Hang the jacket up, take the jacket down. And what the young man wasn't understanding was in his frustration, ah, oh, I've taken the jacket off and I've put the jacket on. I've put the jacket on the hook. I've taken it off the hook. And he was complaining and complaining and complaining, but didn't realize the motions that he was using to take it off and to put it on, to put it on the hook and to take it off the hook. When somebody strikes, boom, you hit their hands. When somebody strikes low, poof, you hit their hands. When somebody comes at you from the side, you take the jacket off and hit their hand. From the other side, you take the jacket off. And he was realizing and finally understood that what he was being taught about those things, putting on and putting off, actually caused him to become extremely victorious in the fight that he was getting ready to have. Oh my goodness, renewing our minds to the putting on and the putting off of the old man to the new man is a state of how we perceive our lives to be. It's a matter of perspective. And if your perspective is you th see things from the flesh and the world, then you will be swallowed up by the limitations of the flesh and the world. When you see things according to the unlimited surpassing greatness of God and the Spirit, you literally take the brakes off God and God can be God in your life. I hope you're getting that, and I don't know if you've seen this, but I'm slowly sinking in the screen, which means my duct tape, you know, is, is working, but it's kind of slowly, you know, uh, slipping away a little bit. But that's okay. We'll, we'll put some more on, because guess what? We're not about to think twice about the flesh and the world and lose our traction with God. Well, the, the Message Bible says, but that's no life for you. You learned Christ. My assumption is that you have paid careful attention to him, been well instructed in the truth precisely as we have it in Jesus. Since then, we do not have the excuse of ignorance. Everything, and I do mean everything, connected with that old way of life has to go. It's rotten through and through. Get rid of it. And of course, you may be thinking, I've been trying to get rid of it. I mean, this is one of the things. I feel stuck. I'm trying so hard to stop doing what I don't want to do and trying to do what I really need to do. And if you're living in that particular mindset, you are living in the law. And you'll always be struggling to be able to get out of what you feel like you're in. When he talks about get rid of everything, and I do mean everything connected with that old way of life, it's rotten through and through. Get rid of it. 
and then take on an entirely new way of life, a God-fashioned life, a life renewed from the inside and working itself into your conduct as God accurately reproduces his character in you. And we listen to that and we think, it's such hard, I'm trying so hard. He's not asking for your effort. He is asking for your acknowledgement that you recognize I'm swimming in the world. I'm literally buying into the drama of life. And I'm tired of doing that, and I want a change. And Lord, I want to walk in the Spirit. And the moment you begin to side in with the way God sees things, grace, God's influence, begins to work in you. This is not about the difficulty of you doing something that's impossible for you to do. We know that you couldn't save yourself, that only Jesus could. Well, then let him perfect in you the salvation that he actually gave you. And by doing so, you begin to acknowledge the drama, the ridiculousness, and by doing so, you turn your back on it, acknowledge God and his grace, and it begins what? It, him, the Holy Spirit, the grace of God, Jesus working in you. This amazing life that is at your disposal starts to work in you, cures, mindset changes, new direction, and new experiences. Wow, if we were all left on our own to figure it out after God saves us by his grace. Then we all stay at the starting blocks and somebody goes two steps forward, but then even then they go four steps back and we get frustrated and we feel like we just can't do it. But when God begins to do it for you, wow, that's when progress begins to happen. Wow, this has been so good. I can't wait to get into the rest of this. You know there's so much meat in this and yet so simple it is. Keep on listening. Tell others about it so we can get even more people. I think we've got about 240 people that listen on a regular basis. It could be 2,000. It could be 20,000 or 240,000. This kind of material will cause you to begin to experience the grace of God and answers to your prayers. Go to Jim Hockaday Ministry Facebook page and follow us or go to the YouTube website where we have a channel called Adventures in Grace. And don't forget to subscribe. Listen to us on a regular basis. By all means, go to jimhockaday.com so you can find our email, jhmi at jimhockaday.com. Share your grace testimonies, even if it's so simple as what I shared today, so that others can see that we're making progress. God bless you. Amen.